It's the Kyle Hyman Show on Redeemer Radio. It's about time to play a game, and today we're playing a game called... American Servants of God. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's get into this. So these are people who are called Servants of God, which means that their causes for canonization are open. They've mm-hmm. been allowed to be opened officially by the Vatican. That's the only Servants step. Servants of God, venerable, yeah. blessed saint. Yeah, so, four steps. so next step is venerable. So then that's when heroic virtue has been confirmed. So they've researched their lives on all this extensive looking into their biography and then also their writings. They said, yep, they were holy. Uh That's venerable. And then blessed is if a venerable person gets a miracle attributed to them, approved. And then saint is two miracles. Usually. Usually. That's the usual. There are some exceptions. Anyway, ready? Let's go. Let's go. Okay. The college seminarians for the Diocese of Fort Wayne, South Bend, attend a seminary named for this man, the first bishop in Indiana. Venerable. No, no. Servant of God. (laughs) I messed up already. (laughs) Servant of God, Bishop Simon Brute. That's right. Okay. Yes. He was a a French missionary in the United States, first bishop of the Diocese of Vincennes, Indiana. That was the first diocese in indiana it encompassed the whole state at the time if you were listening to truth and charity last week you might know that because bishop sort of mentioned it and fun fact about bishop brute president john quincy adams called him the most learned man of his day in america really i know right wow i know shout out to bishop brute getting some props from the top referred to as learned well the most learned most learned okay next Father Bill Atkinson was an Augustinian priest who served in the Archdiocese of Philadelphia for decades until his death just in 2006. He's pretty recent. If you ever went to a mass celebrated by Father Bill, you would have noticed something very unique about him right away. What was it? Uh, His face tattoos. (laughs) No. (laughs) He celebrated mass in a wheelchair. He was the first quadriplegic man ordained to the priesthood in the United States. Yeah. He, when he was studying for the priesthood with the Augustinians, he was injured in a near-fatal tobogganing accident that left him almost completely paralyzed from the neck down. He had to get a special dispensation from Pope Paul VI so that he could be ordained. Wow. But then he served for decades. I wonder how he would administer the sacraments. I if think he had... he had some movement in one of his arms. Okay. So he had to get a dispensation since he could only use one of his arms oh. and not both. Yeah. Interesting. Interesting though, right? Yeah. Okay. Father Vincent Capadano was a posthumous recipient of America's highest military decoration, the Medal of Honor, for heroic actions above and beyond the call of duty for his service as a chaplain during a battle in Vietnam. Which branch of the military did he serve in? The Army. No, the Marines. Anyway, you should check out Father Vincent's story. He died while he was administering last rites to Hmm. soldiers in the field. Okay. Rhoda Wise was a mystic laywoman who lived in Ohio. She has been associated with a number of sudden and unexplained healings, including the healing of probably the most famous American nun, who Rhoda helped heal from a painful stomach ailment before she took her vows. Who was that nun? Since it's Ohio, I will guess Mother Angelica. Mother Angelica is right. Actually, that's how I know Rhoda Wise is because of Mother Angelica's story. Yeah. Okay. All these are servant of gods. Yes, all of these are servant of gods. Pope Francis. Servants of God. Servants of God. Yes. <laughs> servant of gods. Pope Francis included this servant of God in a short list of exemplary Americans, together with Abraham Lincoln, Martin Luther King Jr., and Thomas Merton, in his address before the United States in 2016. Dorothy Day. Dorothy Day is right. Yes. That was a good good talk. If you missed it. Yeah, it was. This priest was the first African-American to be ordained as a diocesan priest in the United States. He served in Chicago, and now he is the inspiration behind a one-man play, which visited our diocese earlier this year. Oh, Augustus Tolton. Yes. Also, I knew the Tolton. I was trying to think. Also, he might get an upgrade from Servant of God soon. Ooh. His canonization is moving right along. It's got part part of his... um, Part of the investigations have been approved, so very exciting. Uh, Father Patrick Payton, often known as the Rosary Priest, 
was one of the first to use mass media for evangelization. By the time of his death, he had helped produce over 600 television and radio shows. He had also overseen the production of three feature-length epics on the life of Christ, hmm. divided into the joyful, sorrowful, and glorious mysteries of the rosary. Oh. Which religious congregation was he a member of? Oh. It has local ties. Is he a Holy Cross priest? He was a Holy Cross priest. Huh. Yeah. Very exciting. I forgot that. Speaking of local ties, that's a big clue. Okay. Francis Perider died when he was only 22 after contracting rheumatic fever while attending seminary. After his death, his spiritual writings and reflections were discovered in his room. Since then, two popes have asked for copies of it, and it has been published in English and in Italian. Where did he go to seminary? The clue is that two of our seminarians go there, too, or will be going there. Uh, the, at the, in Rome. Yes, the North American College in Rome. Close enough. <laughs> the knack. Yes. Despite being paralyzed from a fall at age 20, Virginia Merrick started the charity group in 1987 to provide for needy infants, children, and their families in the Washington, D.C. area. During her lifetime, she grew the charity to 38 chapters, and today it operates all over the country with thousands of members, including groups in both Fort Wayne and South Bend. What is the group called? Oh, uh, is this the Christ Child Society? It is. Oh, good. Man, you're on fire. Okay, last one. Okay. Father Emile Capuan uh, became the ninth military chaplain to receive the Medal of Honor in 2013, 62 years after he died as a prisoner of war. Which war? World War Two. <laughs> no, Korean War. Oh. <laughs> All right. Well, you interesting. Did pretty well. Yeah. Lots of servants of God that we can look up to. 